Hi, I'm Ben. I'm going to take you through plotting and confidence intervals in LabVIEW. This video tutorial is made for ME4031 students at the University of Minnesota. Prerequisites for this video are watching the previous one, creating confidence intervals in Excel. We're going to use the same example there and having LabVIEW installed in your computer. The agenda for this video to cover arrays in LabVIEW, basic plotting, and a linear fit to a basic plot, and then confidence intervals. We're going to use the same example we did in previous ones we have a differential pressure sensor that outputs some voltage for a given pressure. We're trying to find a calibration curve for this, so we're trying to predict a y value from a given x value. The way that solution looked like in Excel was something like this, where we had our voltage on the x and we predicted the delta p value on the y with this given confidence interval. Now we're going to try and do that in Excel, or in LabVIEW. We know we want to, want to have a graph, which is our calibration curve to end with, so we add an xy plot on the front panel. We call that our sensor calibration plot. We know that on the X we're going to have units of voltage in volts, and on Y we're going to have units of delta P in PSI. Now let's look over here on the block diagram to see what we have. We have context help open here on the bottom. And it's going to tell us that for a single plot he needs a cluster coming in, which is a combination which is bundled, two arrays bundled together, one representing your Y data and one array, one array representing your X data and one array, array representing your Y data. So we're going to add a bundle first of all, under cluster, bundle, and connect that into our plot. If you think about how this works in Excel, it's kind of like you think of this as your X array and this as your Y array of data coming in. All right. So we need to make an X array and a Y array of, of our data. One way to do that would be to right click and add several numeric constants to the front panel representing our delta P values. So we have five delta P values. Zero, five, 10, 15, and 20. And just label that delta P so we don't forget. And the, those are our Y values. To build the array of these guys, you right click under array, go to build array. The array is going to have five things inside of it. So we wire them up as such one, two, three, four, five. An array is just a, is a single variable with, with has several values inside of it. It's unlike a scalar in that way. So this array is going to have five values inside of it. We can have a look at what comes out of that by right clicking on the output, going create indicator, and seeing the array on the front panel. I would run it. I can't run it yet because the sensor, the plot's not wired up. So I'll right click and I'll comment this out by going to structure, disable diagram, and disabling that bit there. Now I can run this program. And we look at our what well, came out here in the array. We see the zeroth value in the array, the first index is zero. Index of one has value five, two, ten, and so on. We can drag this guy down, have a look at just all the values inside of it. You see the index two is on top here. We can just change that to index zero, and these are all the values inside of our array. Well, this kind of this guy's kind of cumbersome for creating an array over here because you have to wire these wire these up to this build array all the time. If you wanted to add another value, you'd have to make the array, build array one thing bigger and add another numeric constant. We can skip that step by just adding an array constant over here by right clicking, going to array, array constant. We want to put a numeric constant inside of it, so we right click that zero, control C, control V, drag it inside of there like that. Uh, we don't have any values inside of this array just yet. Let's drag it bigger so we can have a look here. We're going to put inside of it the same values, 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. That's our new array. Now if we delete this guy, we use this indicator to look at this array instead. And connect him up, run him, and see here that on the front panel, the, the value of that array hasn't changed at all. So these are both the same way of doing it, except this guy's more convenient because you can modify the values inside easier, have a look at what's all, what's all inside of it easier. So we're going to choose to do this. We still need to, to add a voltage array, which are going to be our, our X data points. Now these guys are constant, so we can't change them while the program runs. If we wanted to change the values inside the array while it ran, we'd have to add it on the front panel. We can do that by right-clicking, going to Array, adding an array there, right-clicking, going to Numeric Control, and adding that inside. We do this because you can have an array of anything, but 
In this case, we want it to be numeric constants. You see our array is empty over here, but we're going to do this over voltage data. Which are our x data points. The values here, 0 0.6, 1.4, 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.0, 2.0, and 4.2. Now you see that array is just represented over here. That's the output of this guy, is whatever is over here. All right, so we have our X and Y array now. Now we want to plot it. So let's undisable this by just removing the disable structure. Then wiring up our X to our X and our Y to our Y. You can plot this. You see it shows up here as a line. Now since this is raw data, we want it to be data points, so we can change it from a line to data points by right-clicking, going to common plots, and choosing the data point option instead. All right. Well, we just plotted the data. We, now we want to show a best fit line on this data plot. The way we do that is by right-clicking and adding something called linear fit, which is under math, fitting, linear fit. Oh. I'm going to arrow this line over, shift left arrow, to allow myself more room here to work. I'm going to plot them right here. If we look at context self, we see the linear fit takes an X and Y array, which is our raw data, and outputs Y, which is the best linear fit Y value for a given X value. That's just like in, in Excel, this Y predict column. It's going to output this array for each of these X values. So we need to wire up. It's going to need the, these are the Y values here. Okay, then to Y. It also needs the X values, which are the orange into here. And it's going to output an array of y values which we need, to, we need to plot with the x values again. Well this is how we plot one data set. Now, if we look at context help over here, we see if we want to plot more than one we need to build an array of these individual clusters. So we need to copy control C, control V of that, delete this line, and add in a build array function. We're going to build array of these two clusters. Add them together here, and then output that built array to the sense to the plot. So this this is our second set of data, our second x y data set. So the y is going to come right from here. It's this best linear fit, but the x is going to be up here. He's the same x. If you think over in in Excel, right, we plotted this x and this y, and also this x and this y as our two data sets. We go back to our our block diagram here. We run it. We see our our y predict. Prediction line has showed up again uh, and over in all of our raw data applied as points. Now, if we want to change what that line looks like, we can see our two data sets up here. We can right click on that line, say we want to make the line wider and now green. And we want to make the data points, make those red. All right, so that's our prediction line. If we want to see the slope and intercept of this, we can right click over the slope. Go create an indicator. And the same thing for the intercept, right click, create indicator. Those both showed up on the front panel over here. I can drag these down so they look nicer. They're just cluttered now. If I run it again, I see you get the slope and intercept. These are the same as we got in the Excel plot. All right, if you want to add the confidence intervals to this, you're just going to add another block called under mathematics called fitting, advanced curve fitting, linear fit interval. You do a context help with this, you see you put your X and Y data set in again, but now it's going to return X values that represent the upper, the va Y values that return the upper bound, and Y values that return the lower bound. So you're based, and when you plot them, you're going to have four bundles, and you're going to have bundled together four things into this linear, into this plot. So you're going to have to drag four th more things down there, Control-C, and have these. So you're going to feed in the X, or sorry, the Y outputs here into here and use the same X for each of these guys. And that'll give you your confidence intervals on that plot. What it's going to return again are both of these delta Y values is, are going to be the output of the confidence interval. So that's our, that's our plotting in LabVIEW. Just a reminder, LabVIEW is going to plot this way, not using the linear confidence interval, but curve fit, so keep that in mind. Additional resources, the NI Developer Zone, they have people share. There are VIs online, so you can go there for more examples. Also, LabVIEW is help built in under help. Find examples, search for XY graph. Good luck.